Hello folks, hope you're well. What connects John Mayer and Steve Reich? Two incredibly successful musicians, maybe you've listened to one or both of them. John Mayer is an American singer and guitarist and someone that I don't know that much about. And Steve Reich is an American contemporary classical composer who I also don't know that much about. So why am I making a video about them? As a guitar teacher, phrasing is one of the hardest, most nebulous concepts to teach, and there's not one approach that works for everyone. A lot of musicians absorb the phrasing of others, of the music and musicians they like, and turn it into something personal, different, and interesting. In this video, I wanna share with you a couple of cool ideas inspired by John Mayer and Steve Reich, respectively, that I hope will help you develop your own sense of melodic phrasing, whatever stage you're at with your playing. And the beauty of these exercises is they can be applied to pretty much any instrument. So let's kick things off with a John Mayer lick. But before we do that, please give the video a like. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll love you forever. This John Mayer lick is from one of his Instagram live videos that I stumbled across on YouTube. It's a fascinating little lesson and well worth a watch. So I'll pop a link in the description below. The lick itself was a sort of off the cuff thing that he did midway through the session and I just loved it. It's nothing particularly spectacular, it just sounds really cool. It goes like this. <laughs> of this exercise is that you can do it with any lick that you know but if you want to do it with this John Mayer lick here's how you play it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just play it nice and slowly and then I'll go through it in a little more detail. We start on the 13th fret and on the way down it's virtually all pull-offs and it's two or three notes per string. So we go 13 to 10 on the B string, pull off, move to the G. Once we're on the G, we do this little slide and pull off. So the slide gives us the blues note, 12 to 13, back to 12, pull off to 10. Onto the D string, we pull off 12 to 10 down to the A, pull off 12 to 10, and slide back to 8. Then we play 10 on the E, then you go back to 10 on the A, pull off to 8, back to the E string, pull off to 8, from 10, and I slide back up to 10 there just to finish. So. One of the best ways to improve our phrasing is to understand how changing the placement of a phrase or lick impacts what we play and how what we play sounds in the context of the rest of the music. Simply changing which beat of the bar you start playing on can have a massive impact on the way that a particular sequence of notes sounds. It's also worth mentioning that every guitarist has a particular beat of the bar that they like to start playing on. And more often than not, particularly if you haven't been playing that long, that preference will be an unconscious one. But the best players are in touch with where they're playing or they feel it intuitively and they use this to their advantage. So let me demonstrate what that John Mayer lick sounds like when I start it on different beats of the bar. Here's beat one. Beat two. 
So that's pretty cool and obviously you could keep moving that lick onto beat three and onto beat four. But when this idea really comes into its own is when you start moving the lick in between the main beats of the bar. So this time listen how it sounds when I start the lick on the and of beat four. One, two, three, four, and. Finally, my personal favourite, let's move it one semiquaver back in time. So we're going to start it on the E of four. One, two, three, four, E and a. Very very cool. Kind of sounds like a different lick altogether. Obviously you can play on any of the in-between beats within the bar, so experiment and have some fun with it. So hopefully you can see how much of an impact that has on how the lick sounds and how as a listener we interpret the notes coming at us. Now Steve Reich. Steve Reich is most famously known as a composer in the minimalist tradition. I first heard of him studying GCSE music when we were analysing his beautiful piece electric counterpoint. In the piece, amongst other things, he uses the rhythmic displacement of repetitive phrases to build constantly evolving textures and melodic patterns. The way that the phrases interact with each other and the pulse of the music as it progresses is the thing here, and that's what I want to explore in the next idea. Rather than changing where the phrase starts and ends, in this idea I want to explore how a repeating pattern of notes can evolve over a simple chord sequence to create something interesting. This example is in 4-4 four, four, and it works best if you pick an odd number of notes to work with. There isn't three. I'm going to use seven notes. Here is the sequence of notes that I'm going to use. So the seven notes I'm going to use for this little experiment go So I'm going to start on the third fret of the E string and I'm going to pull off to the open E string, then to the G string, open, second, hammer that on, then it's open B string, hammer on first fret, pull off, back to the open. It's really important that all of those notes are the same length. So here they are when I'm playing them the same length. and I'll just loop two of those together for you so you can hear how it sounds when it joins up. And here's the note sequence with the music. Listen for how the sequence seems to evolve as I play and try to spot where the sequence comes back to where it started. So there you go, not exactly Steve Reich, 
but it was a lot of fun. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you did. As a Brucey bonus, if you'd like to practice what I've taught in this lesson to the backing tracks used, just get in touch in the comments and I'll send you the backing tracks free of charge. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.